Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Bob and in this series of videos we'll be looking at SAP S4 HANA. In this series of videos we'll be looking at how to use core data services. And in this video we're going to be looking at the concepts of associations or joins. So in the previous video what we did is we built a couple of views and what we're going to do is focus on this video. In this video is joining those views together. So to give you some background quickly, what we have is a view called airline. This is a basic view and you can see it simply returns an ID, a currency code and a URL. That's essentially what it returns. Again, we can see that by right clicking on the view and going to uh, open with data preview. Now we have another view here which is called airline text. And this view returns, again, an ID, but the carrier name. So in this simple example, what we're going to do is join the two views together. You see that this view, we're going to be able to join it on the airline, the, the, this code here. And again, if I go back to my original view, you can see that we've got that ID here, and it's also called airline as well. So as you can imagine, we're just going through a basic introduction into the concept of joining. So now this view is tested and we know it works, we need to make some changes to this view. This is because we want to add an, an association to the new airline text view, so we essentially can do that join. So the first thing we need to do is at the top level, again, we need to add an annotation to indicate that the view data is a good candidate for extraction to a data warehouse. We covered this in the last video, so we're going to do an analytics um, dot data extraction and we're going to set this method is to be enabled equals true. Next we need to add another annotation and this will indicate the most significant key field of this view and we kind of did the same thing here with airline text which was this representative key which is kind of like the join. So this would be the key that's used in the association. So to do that, I'm going to type object model, and then we're going to go and set get representative key. And here we just need to type the aim of that key, which of course is airline. And again, this means it's going to join to this key in this simple example here. So you should note that the field's alias is used and not the actual field name carrier ID. So one other thing we can do here is because... We've now set up the actual two keys. We can actually now perform the join. Now, this is done on the other view because we're going to be joining this one via the ID to this one. We're going to add the actual join here. So we do it right here. So it's after the selection of the table, but it's before these the start of this curly bracket. Again, remember, everything in here is relating to the select statement. So all we need to do is the following. We need to add the following syntax. So it's association. And then we need to add the cardinality. So if I type in that cardinality, it's going to be as follows. Then we need to decide on what we're going to apply this to. So this is going to be the actual other view. So of course, if I do control space, it's looking for code completion results and it's going to look for that object. So all I need to do now is type the beginning, which is ZXH. There we go. And it's, of course, going to list all the objects which are available. So the one that we want to choose here is the airline text, because that's what we're going to be joining to. And then we can add an alias at the end. So I'm going to put this as underscore text. And this is because we're using a naming convention when using associations. So next we need to add some other syntax. So we need to then define this join. So we're going to do this by using a dollar projection. So projection will appear. Oops. So if I use code completion, dollar pro, there we go. And if we type this, this is the column that we're going to be joining on, which is obviously the alias column airline. And we're joining on this carrier ID like so. So I'll select it. And then we need to do equals essentially to the other side. So if I do underscore text, and then of course that other column is airline. 
And there's an error here because I accidentally think deleted my alias. There we go. So you can see the error messages really help. So just to review, of course, when you're typing um, any of your syntax, code completion gives you suggestions when you're typing in the dollar projection or the association. Of course, you can use tab keys to accept suggestions from Code Assist, or you can use select plus enter in cases of multiple choices. Uh, when it comes to this, we're using a name, naming convention for our associations, so we've just called it underscore text. In terms of this piece of code here, projection is the projected result set or selected columns in our current view. So this is the link to that other column in that view. So the association is now on this underscore text. And then you've also got the dot airline is the representation or the main key field of the airline text view. And then, of course, that's going to link the current view. Sorry, this, this is this piece. And then the current view is this one here, and that's why we're doing the projection. So it's essentially the representative key of this airline view. Again, we're in the airline view. We're not in the airline text view. Of course, one thing I missed out was the cardinality here. So you can use cardinality for language-dependent texts when there is an optional or one-to-many relationship or cardinality. Now, there should be a warning here to the left of the association, and this is because we haven't used underscore text in our select fields or result set of this airline's view yet. So to do this, all we need to do is add underscore text at the end of the select columns list so that the columns from the airline text view are made available to our airline CDS view. So all that means is that we need to go at the end, add a column, and again, all we're doing here is saying that we're essentially going to join to this. So here I'm just including that list, and then what we should get is no errors. So all we need to do here now is obviously save, and you might want to activate this view. There we go. So now to test, of course, it's always a good idea to right click and then open up in data preview. So what you'll notice here that if we do any form of data preview whilst in Eclipse, you won't see the underscore text fields in this preview. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that those fields from airline text aren't available later on. There is a way to actually view these fields in preview. All we need to do is change some of the syntax. So to show you that, all I need to do is go right to the bottom. I'll just make a bit of space here. And all we need to do is modify underscore text. So if I change this to dot and use code completion and include this, again, if I save and activate, we'll then be able to see those additional columns in data preview. So of course, if I go back and do that data preview, there we go. Now, for our view, we don't really need to see the specific airline text view fields. So this is just to illustrate this new field coming into our airline CDS view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back. So if I close the preview, and then I will change this. Of course, we only need underscore text. And of course, I'll save and I'll activate. OK, so I hope you enjoyed that basic example of doing an association within a CDS. In the next video, we're going to be looking at adding more views to our model.